everybody, Jeremy Blum here, back with episode 8 of my Arduino tutorial series, sponsored by Element 14. This week we're going to be talking about the SPI, or Serial Peripheral Interface Bus, also known as the SPI Bus. Um, in this episode, I'll be using it with an SPI-controlled digital potentiometer that will allow us to vary the input voltage to various LEDs that will change their brightness. This is just another way of changing LED brightness instead of using pulse width modulation. There's a lot of other devices that use SPI also. For another example, go check out the video of my reaction project, which is an audio-visual theremin that I've been working on for some time. It's kind of on hold now so that I could work on these video series actually, but um, that's an example of where I'm using SPI to control a large multicolor LED matrix. So you can go check that out too if you want to see another implementation. But let's get started. We'll uh, start on working to control these LEDs with an SPI enabled chip. Let's talk quickly about how the SPI bus actually works. It's a little bit different from the I2C bus that we talked about last week. Similarly to I2C, it communicates synchronously, which means you need to have a shared clock signal between all the masters and the slaves. In this picture, I have two slaves and one master drawn. The master in our case will be the Arduino. The master generates a clock signal that's shared by the SPI slaves. There's also a send and receive line. Unlike I2C, where there's only one data line, here data can be transmitted in both directions, enabling for a higher throughput. MOSI, or master out, slave in, goes from the master to the slave, and MISO, master in, slave out, goes out from the slaves to the master. You'll notice that these lines can be shared and no pull-up resistors are needed, unlike the I2C bus. That's because we have a unique chip select line that allows us to figure out which slave we're talking to. You generally have one chip select for each slave that you want to control. You pull that chip select line low to enable controlling that slave. You shouldn't ever have more than two, one chip select line pulled low at a time. It's also possible to daisy chain these chip select lines together so that you only use one output pin from the Arduino. But we won't, we won't discuss that here. That application is a little bit more advanced and requires some more logic on both ends of the circuit. Today's goal is to wire up a digital potentiometer chip, specifically the AD5204 from analog devices, to allow us to control the voltage input to several LEDs using voltage dividers that we'll set up using the digital potentiometers. Let's start by looking at the data sheet for this part. All I had to do was type in AD5204 into Google, and it's the first result that comes up. It'll generally bring you to the analog device page for the part. This will give you a brief description. It's also available in a six channel version. We'll be using a four channel version, although we'll only use three of the channels. We'll control three LEDs today. You can see an example, another example of this in my reaction project as well. I also use a 5204 as a digital pot to control the volume of some speakers. All right, we have the data sheet up. Let's scroll through it. We want to start by finding the, uh, the pinout. This will give you some timing information. OK, here's a pinout. That's the surface mount version. All right, we want the dip socket version. This is ours. So let's zoom in on this. And uh, this is what we'll be using to make our schematic. So today, because the circuit's a little bit more complex, I've already made a schematic in EagleCAD. If you're not familiar with EagleCAD, it's a free open source program for making electrical schematics. And I'll have the, uh, the files for this uploaded after the video is done. OK, so let's take a look at this chip. There's 12 pins on each side, 24 pins total. Here we can see our ground, our chip select. The line over it means it's active low. In other words, pulling it down is what activates it. A couple of lines here that will just basically pull high to set them to their default states. You don't have to worry about them too much. But if you want descriptions, descriptions are available down below. Here we can see SDI, but that stands for SPI data in. So that's the same as our master out slave in line. And this is our um, master in slave outline. And then we, here we can see the clock signal that our SPI bus will be using. And uh, on the other side, these are all the inputs for our digital potentiometers. Let's take a look at digital potentiometer number three. Each one has three pins, A, B, and W. W stands for washer. A will be getting hooked up to five volts and B down to ground. The washer was basically a washer that we can digitally change. If you remember the pot I showed you back in an earlier tutorial, we can digitally change the value of that washer to set this voltage divider to whatever we want. So if we bring a line out from the washer, we can get a special input voltage into our LED that's not 5 volts, and we can control it with the microcontroller. Bringing in a voltage less than 5 volts will make the LED dimmer. All right, so let's look at the schematic that I've made for this. Here's the schematic that I've put together for this circuit. You can see that all the pins are in the same order that they were on the data sheet I showed earlier. 
Note that the bubbles here indicate lines that are active low logic. The triangle indicates a clock line when drawing a schematic. You can see I have ground connected to ground. VSS is also indicating ground. Um, PR, VDD, and shutdown all go up to VCC, also known as 5 volts, uh, because we just want to keep those high the whole time so it doesn't shut down or anything like that. Uh, and then on the Arduino, pin 10 is is generally what you use for chip select, but you can obviously use other pins if you have more than one chip select that you need to control. Pin 10 is the first default, though. Um, when you use the SPI interface in Arduino, pin 11 will always be your serial data into the slave, so master out, slave in. Pin 13 will be your clock line always, and pin 12 will always be slave in, or sorry, slave out uh, data or into the master. We won't really be using pin 12, I'll hook it up anyway, but we're basically just sending data from the master to the slave. Okay, on the right side, we can see that we have all of our LEDs hooked up here. So coming out of the wipers, like I said before, we're just gonna have our LEDs going to ground. Note that you always need to have a resistor in line with your LEDs. This time I chose 220 ohms. I could have chosen a lesser value and made them a little bit brighter, but 220 will work just fine. And then they go to ground on the other end. As I said before, all the A values will be using uh, 1, 2, and 3 here will be going up to 5 volts, and the Bs will be going down to ground. However, you'll notice I have them going through a 10K resistor. This is essentially creating a larger value on the bottom of the voltage divider, which will cut out the bottom half of the range for the LEDs. This is because LEDs have a turn-on voltage a little bit above 2 volts, so what I'm doing here, since the potentiometer goes from 0 to 10K, I'm basically cutting out the bottom half of the... Uh, digital potentiometer range so that we only go from 2.5 volts up to 5 volts. Otherwise, the LEDs will be spending most of their time being off. And you can adjust this value based on your LEDs and, and things like that. All right, so that's the circuit. Let's see what it looks like wired up. Here we can see the circuit all wired up. Right in the middle is our AD5204 chip. Make sure you note that the top of the chip is where the little indent is in it. On the left side, we have everything connected to power and ground where I showed in the schematic earlier. These green wires go to the chip select and the other communication wires for the SPI communication bus to the Arduino. All those pin numbers are specified on Arduino's website. On the right side, we can see the three yellow LEDs that I have hooked up to washers 1, 2, and 3. And then we have both the 220 ohm resistors and the 10K resistors here. So six resistors in total, two for each LED. The 10K goes to ground from part B of the washer and the 220 ohm goes through the LED. Okay, let's write the program that we're gonna to use to control our digital potentiometer. As always, we're gonna to need to include any libraries that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna write include spi.h to include the SPI library. Next up, I've already written it in. We have to set our slave select pin to 10 because you can potentially have multiple slave select pins. You'll note I don't have to set anywhere the pins, the other communication pins, the three other ones, uh, MOSI, MISO, and clock pins, because those will be handled automatically by the SPI library. But this one you need to set. So set that. Uh, we need to set it as an output, just as we always do. And then we'll initialize the SPI um, class in the setup function. The next thing I'm going to do is write our, a new function for controlling the LEDs based on an input that we give it. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it takes a couple lines to control them and I just want to simplify it for us so we can just say set this LED to this amount. So let's call that function void set LED int reg int level. So here's a breakdown of what's that, what that's doing. First off it's void because it's not returning anything. Um, we've done it before and had it return instant stuff. This time it's not going to return anything. This is just going to execute something and that's it. The function is called set LED and has two parameters, both integers. The first one is reg for register and the second one is level. So there's uh, four registers on, the, on this digital potentiometer that we're using and we're using one, two, and three. Although it's important to note that those are registers zero, one, and two. When you're using uh, microcontrollers and things like that, most numbering generally starts with zero. So we'll pass it a zero, let's say if we want to turn on LED one, and then we'll set the level of that anywhere from zero to 255. This is an eight bit control digital potentiometer. So we go zero to 255, 256 bits of resolution. Okay, um, or 256 pieces of resolution, it's eight bit. 
So in here, the first thing we need to do is choose our slave select that we're going to be working with. Now, on SPI, slave select is active low, which means you need to pull that pin low to decide that you're going to write to that device. So we'll digital write the slave select for the digital potentiometer low. And while that pin's low, anything that we communicate on the SPI bus will only go to that device. So if we have multiple things in the same line, we can communicate to all of them. Um, so spi.transfer is the function we'll use to send our information. The way this digital potentiometer is expecting to receive information is it expects to receive one byte with the register and then one byte with the level you want to set it to. So the first thing we'll do is send it to reg. And then we'll do spi.transfer and we'll send it the level next. Now we finished transmitting to it. So we want to write the um, slave select pin back to high. That's just how you do it. Okay. So that's that. Now we can use that in our loop. And for the loop, I've decided what we'll do is we'll have each LED uh, in sequence uh, ri rise up to full brightness, then fall down back to off, and then go to the next LED and we'll do the same thing. So let's do that. To do this, we're going to do two for loops inside of each other, which is something we have not done yet. Um, like I said in the previous episode, for loops are really awesome and extremely useful, and they become even more useful when you nest them. So let's look at how we're going to do this. The first thing we're going to do is loop through the registers, which I'm going to do uh, with this outside for loop right here. So what this for loop is going to do is it's going to start at register 0, and then do register 0, 1, and 2, and increment by 1 each time. So we'll have some other stuff go inside of this for loop. So what this will do, let's, let's think about this as if we're just controlling the first register right now. So the first time through this for loop, what do we want it to do? We want the LED to go to up to full brightness and then back down. So we'll make another for loop that increments through the brightness levels. We'll do int j equals 50. I'm starting it at 50 because if you start it completely off, it takes a while for the LED to turn on. It doesn't. You can't actually see any brightness coming from the LED for a little while. So I'm going to start at 50 instead of 0. And we'll do j less than or equal to... 255 incrementing by one each time okay um, and so with each increment we will set the LED that's why we made this function remember to make it easier to do this we'll set the LED uh, I comma J so if we're on loop 0 through this it'll set LED on register 0 to this value through this for loop so that'll increment each LED in succession. And um, then we'll just do a delay of, mm, let's say, 20, so that it doesn't happen instantaneously and we can't even see it. And now we want to have it scale back down. So now we're just going to do the same thing in reverse. But let's have it hold at the top for just a little bit, a half a second or so. And now we're just going to do the same for loop in reverse. So we'll do int j. We can use j again because they're two separate things. Um, we'll start it at 255 this time. And we'll have it until j is um, greater than or equal to 50. And we'll do j minus minus because we're going down this time. And again, we'll use our set LED function that we made with i comma j as the arguments once again. And do that delay one more time. OK, that should do it. Let's see how our. SPI digital potentiometer controls our LEDs. Remember that this was washer 1, washer 2, and washer 3, so register 0, 1, and 2. And you can see that they're changing brightness in order, a nice slow increase and a slow decrease back down. It makes a nice effect. This would be a nice thing to use for something like a night light, and you could put different color LEDs in it or something like that and make a nice little glowing effect. So this is our digital potentiometer controlled by SPI in action. What's happening is the voltage levels are changing instead of us changing it by PWM and that's changing the brightness of the LED. And that's it. Alright, thanks for watching this episode of my Arduino tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them on YouTube, element14.com, or my blog. Next week we'll start working with the XB wireless communication modules. So if you don't already have an XB shield and an XB transmitter slash receiver, uh, now would be the time to go out and grab those. We'll be communicating between two Arduinos, uh, two Arduino Unos using those transmitters and receivers. So I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.
Thanks to Element 14 for helping me to sponsor this video series. They were kind enough to provide a lot of the materials that I'll be using to create these tutorials. Feel free to go visit their website at element14.com. Check out their community, which is a great place to talk to people about electronics, the Arduino, and basically anything else engineering related. And they also have a store where you can buy a lot of the parts that we'll be using in these videos.